Ladies and gentlemen, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and welcome, welcome, welcome to the first episode of Rugby Academy Island Live again since pre COVID. Yes, we've done some of the small uh, chats with some of the students and coaches and analysts and stuff like that, but we're back now. We're back bigger and better and better than ever. And tonight we're very tough because we have now tied down. Literally almost, we had to get him in the studio, our director of rugby, Dan Funsell. Uh, tonight, we'll be going through what's been happening, uh, future plans. We'll be looking at some of the successes of the students. We'll be looking at some of the courses. We'll be explaining what the Learning Pathway program is, programs are, and we'll be looking at a range of things that we're doing at home and abroad. This is Rugby Academy Island, an international independent uh, academy based in Ireland for aspiring young players and you're welcome to tonight's show. Listen, let's bring the big man in himself. Former Springbok International Scrum Half, all round bloody good egg. He's our director of rugby. <laughs> He's a really good mate. It's Dan from Sale. Dan, good evening, sir. How are you? Uh, good evening, Joe. Very well, thanks. And thanks for that introduction, calling me big. I used to be small. <laughs> Scrum halves, all scrum halves have a little man syndrome, mate. They all think that they're, they all think that they're, they're, they're big, mate. But uh, listen, we're great to be back and doing these quarterly shows. Uh, again, brought to us by our good friends at VO. VO is the ultimate camera for team sports. Uh, record and live stream your matches automatically and take the game to the next level up go to vo.co and have a look at what they do so we've got people watching us tonight uh ian gilbert ian one of our ulster fans a big fan of the academy that hola from madrid is our in there good evening to you Ian. i hope that you will so dan we're back after such a long time pre-covid it was the last time we did a full show uh, for the academy through three bod and we, and we managed to get you on so this will now become a uh, a regular thing so how have you been how is the academy what's been going on ah uh, look it's been crazy times but we've had a good we've had a good year the last year you know but uh, as you say we haven't had these chats for for a long time and actually feeling nervous having them again because during covid times and and so on you were quite used to all the zoom calls and call it, you know, webinars and seminars and, and all of that. And now, now we're back into reality. And, uh, you know, we've been quite busy this, this last year um, coming out of COVID where, where nothing was, was happening in the academy. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, um, it's quite an interesting time, isn't it? There's, there's a lot of people now trying to get back into uh, the, the, the usual routines. Um, but from, from, a, from an, an academy point of view, um what was it like because there was nothing for a while and then you know we're still inundated with the uh, requests for courses and we'll come on to the types of courses and things we do because there's again we get so many questions all the time private messages requests for information and stuff so just let's just start with just sort of recast them back what what is rugby academy island about for you why did you and johan johan taylor international accredited coach in his own right uh former uh, you know a nation's winner a cup winner with sri lanka as a coach what is it about rugby academy island for for the two of you and why you set it up look um you know for for i probably uh started as johan was it was johan's idea and you know we talk about it for for a number of years is what is out there for the player that don't really make it, that feel that he's good enough, but through injury or through perception of a coach or through whatever level it is, maybe just not getting the opportunity that um, other people get, how can they get the same sort of level coaching and training as the players in in mainstream academies and so on so it's always been a brainchild of us and then you know as i said uh we started i worked in player development and then always had a passion for for youth players uh, for young adults 
and to see them progress. So we started the academy and I ought to think it's five years now or going, you know, this September will be will be going into our into our fifth season. So uh, with COVID in between, so we're basically starting from from scratch or did the last year. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to come on to the uh, player learning pathway uh, learning uh, pathway programs uh, shortly. That's really, really exciting. But um, I'll, I'll get in trouble if I don't. There we go. Who, where, and why? So, who? Uh, we know we're based at the uh, the four star, beautiful four star Killershee Hotel and Spa in County Kildare. Uh, we know why you set up, but who? There's yourself as director of rugby and Johan Taylor as our director. How do the two roles differ? What what do you both do? People are interested in and in how it runs and what you both do. Yeah, look, we we dovetail a lot, you know. So we probably one or two guys in one guy's body. But in in fairness, uh, Johan runs all the operations. You know, probably looking after all the governance and then. Coaching wise, he's in charge of of the contact skills. Uh, you know, uh, having played at a high level himself and and being a forward, um, he's looking after the contact skills and always also forward specific stuff. Uh, and then myself, I'm responsible for directing the program, the day to day life uh, of the academy. Uh, you know, from from nine o'clock in the morning to five o'clock uh, in the evening. Um, and the different elements uh, that 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 takes, and um, also looking after <clears throat> majority of the of the coaching with within the academy then as well. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, brilliant. <clears throat> Learning pathway programs. Okay, this is one of the things that really sold for me a couple of years ago when you were developing this whole uh, this whole concept. Um, Although we are an academy, an independent international academy for aspiring players to get them to the pro level, really it's about trying to get a boy or a girl, uh, rugby player, female or male rugby player, to the best level they can be at, end, at the given point when they come through the academy. But this twin track approach, the Learning Pathway Programme, explain to everybody what is that and, and what does that entail? Look, it's something that's developing all the time. When we started, we wanted to be known as a as a rugby academy with education as sort of probably I, I want to say secondary, but a lower part. So probably eighty percent to twenty percent. Um, and then as we as we carried on and as we got requests from from parents and especially as our transition year program is developing. Uh, player injury, we realized that every player is not going to um, make it to become a professional player, although that's everybody's dream. So we we try to develop a learning pathway program, and every year we bring in something new to the course um, where players can stay in the game, although they might not be able to play, or they might find out that they're not good enough to play, as we give a very honest assessment to players as well during during their time with us. So our learning pathway, you know, we are third level uh, or registered third level education through ITEC College where players get a, a NQF level five and NQF level four qualification uh, or they have the, the chance to do it uh, through ITEC um, in strength and conditioning and personal training. Um, we have a sports psychology diploma uh, that uh, players do with us. Um, we NAC sports video analysis uh, qualification. So player come out of the academy and he can analyze any any sport. Rugby obviously being the main one, but they can go and video games and do statistics on on all all sports. So a very um, thorough uh, NAC sports qualification. We do public speaking where players, you know, when they start off and after the eight-week program, massive change in, in how they talk in front of cameras or with the media. We do media training. Um, and there's, you know, a lot more as well. Cooking classes, they learn how to cook for themselves. So it's it's very much a lifestyle, holistic approach Uh preparing them for, for life after rugby. But if they can't make it as a rugby player, there's ways that they can stay in it through refereeing, through coaching. We do the IRFU coaching courses, safe rugby. 
So we sort of that taster for them to hopefully go uh, and stay in the game at, at whatever level. And I just think that's fantastic. I mean, we've uh, there's there's uh, some of the students who have graduated in in the past uh, in, the, in the past short short period um, now are uh, not only have gone on to will come on to some of the successes, but you know, you say if they don't get to that very top level, they at 19, 18, 19 years of age, 20 years of age, they can go and be a personal fitness trainer, strength and conditioning, and an analyst, a video analyst in any yeah. sport, and, and really. During during while they with us they probably realize as well what it takes to be a professional rugby player you know and are they cut out so we always talk about the success but we've had guys that's been with us for a month or two months and then they realize look this is maybe not for me uh you know the dedication that it takes and the commitment that it takes but we leave them with that taster in okay you know you might not be in the game or you might not play the game, but there's a lot of other parts that you can stay involved because you love the sport. Brilliant. I, I just think it's a fantastic uh, situation to be in. Qualified and strength and condition. And you know, this is the eight-month course. We'll come back to what the transition year or the international year mm. full, full course is in, in, in depth. But being able to qualify alongside their aspirations, you know, in, in any of those things, or refereeing or coaching, it's just a for, for, for phenomenal, like say, the lifestyle skills. And bearing in mind that these these students who, who come through the academy, they're not just from Ireland, are they? Where are they from? No, because that's that's also the other thing that I wanted to say. We also link to Avante Language School, which is the, you know, I think, um, well, before COVID, they were the best language school in the, in the country, you know, nominated for that. So... Uh, People coming from abroad, we had Manon Nayarak uh, with us this year who came to do an English master's, uh, you know, or with Avante. Uh, she was French speaking from, from Belgium. So, you know, that opportunity is also there for Irish kids to learn a different language or for, for English kids, uh, uh, sorry, for foreign kids to come over and, and learn English as we now the the only... EU English speaking country. Um, so there's big opportunity. There's big opportunity there. Uh, over the summer months, you see it a lot with English and, and rugby courses and so on. But no, our players come from a variety of countries. You know, we've had guys now, if I talk full time, you know, from Denmark, from USA, from Canada, from Belgium, from Portugal, you know, from South Africa, from Namibia. So a vast majority, I, I'm trying to, to think because I'm leaving a lot out, but then in summer months, Spain, Germany, guys, Italy, even Uruguay. had a guy from Mexico City, you know, yeah, yeah. Uruguay, uh, Chile, Argentina, you know, the South American uh, countries. So, so really it's, it's, it's a vast, vast amount. And you don't even realize uh, in some of the, the countries where they play and the interest that's there, you know. Spain is a is a big uh, nation now, uh, or tier two nation coming through, and so on. So, really, the the countries that that we have um, is is from all over Europe, and then North America, South America, South Africa, uh, and Namibia. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, so, and some some great youngsters coming through, and the way that they sort of gel together and learn from each other is just. It's almost, it's a spin-off that, that you could, you know, with, you just couldn't buy it really, could you? Yeah, but, no, I mean, we actually have a, we, we should have a map, you know, and you, you make me think of something. We should actually have a world map in the academy and places where we've been as coaches, you know, spreading the word. And then also where the players that's, that's joined us uh, come from. Even, even in Ireland, you know, this year we had um, three three people or two people down from uh, Kilani and then a third one joined us in, in January. So, so, you know, uh, down there, um, beautiful part of the world. Um, but I, you know, so even in Ireland, we, we come from all, all different places. Absolutely. So there we go. That is our learning pathway program and what it is the opportunity to learn additional qualifications alongside your aspirations to become a male or female professional player and to leave 
Uh, there's one final thing on the back of all this. Not only can you become in, uh, you do you come in as an aspiring male or female player trying to get to the very top level. There's the learning pathway programs with all of those qualifications you can hit. But as one other thing, Dan Fun Sale, what does the academy guarantee the youngsters coming through on the on the on the full courses um, at the end of it? What do you do for them? Yeah, I, uh, I just wanted to say that even on the previous question, you know, Big Joe Shepherd give them. Uh, course in uh, streaming as well you know and how to do live shows and so on which which will help them as well no uh, full time full time uh, what what we say to the guys is obviously you know they come out of uh, um, out of the course with a qualification uh, which they might not know it now but that is straight away they they can earn uh, money coming you know doing doing a job uh, out of the academy but our main focus is obviously the rugby and trying to to improve the player to a level, whether it's pro level or semi pro level, where we offer them a trial somewhere in the world, depending on their ability and their character. Because a lot of coaches out there now will know, you know, there's top class players, but if they don't have the right character, they might not be suited for that team because it's such an ultimate team game. So, and that's. Uh, what we try and develop throughout the academy as well is we we develop the character of the guy as much as he's as his playing ability and then through playing for local clubs he gets the experience so we obviously an individual program uh, where if we have ten hookers we have ten hookers we don't play as a team so we uh, develop the individual and then he plays for local club over the weekend, whether that's in the AIL or whether that's under 20 rugby or whether that's for his local club, if we talk TYs under 17 a level or at the Shane Horgan um, competition within the in the uh, Leinster pathway. Um, but we offer players a trial period at uh, uh, the school leavers at a semi-pro or pro level um, club um, when they finished with us. That's absolutely superb, isn't it? There's not many places I know that does those three sets. Yeah, of things. no, we're not we're not an agent. We don't promise no. them they're going to get a contract or anything, you know. But we deliver on giving them a trial, and then it's up to that club, uh, you know, whether the club is uh, whether the player is good enough or fits into the into the club's program. But one thing that I'm very proud of that we do is even players that was with us in year one, and as I say, we're going hard to believe, but going into year five uh, is we always look after the players. We always try our best to to help them in wherever they wherever they are. Obviously, the the longer we continue and the bigger we get, it will probably be more difficult. But both Johan and myself have got a very personal relationship with with parents and and players uh, that's been with us. Yeah, absolutely, and, and, and I love that. And, um, <clears throat> having only been with you, sort of, um, I say part time, but we know it's not. <laughs> <laughs> you fool! <laughs> so, <laughs> I am a full time. It's overwhelmed my life. It's it's just you, I'm you can't help. Me and me and Johan is part time, and you fool. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. He'll be watching us. You better not know about that. Um, <clears throat> but the uh, the the what the academy is 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 doing i think there's there, there is very very little um out there as well and being able to um of course we're now we're we're, we're now looking aren't we because since covid um and the world is changing now there's a lot of more opportunities for club levels across the globe so we're currently engaged with a number of organizations uh, that we are discussing with that we can through them put, put students who graduate through across the globe and that really just keeps on it just builds our level not just from the professional level and the elite level all the way down um i was speaking to in fact on friday i am uh, interviewing uh, on our one-to-one -one series um carl christian vansgaard uh who is a danish guy coming out in france and he is going to holland next year and he's been selected for the you know paid made his debut for the Danish national team recently. Phenomenal. I mean, his, uh, his, blimey, I had to stop him when I was having my discovery phone call with him and say, save all these good things about the academy for Friday when I do the interview. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, 
but it's 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 really good you know some of these no, but there's a great around. example of a, a guy that walked into the door six foot six foot nine you know best best in denmark but how good is he he doesn't know plays a handful of games a season you know nothing against uh coaches or so on but he didn't get the experience that he got in Ireland while being with us. You know, he played for NUIM Barnall under 20s, where very good coaching structure there, great club. Um, he got his experience there. Then from, from the club rugby in Ireland, and obviously his learnings through the academy, he's actually got his own business in, in um, video analysis. So, um, you know, that he wouldn't have had if he didn't join us. But then from us, he went to Poland. Yeah. Played in Poland, from Poland, uh, went to Nevers in, in France as an Esquire uh, player, and now he's, he's going as a, as a professional player in, in Holland, in, in the Netherlands, you know. So, and he's just a guy that really want to get as much experience as he can, want to travel the world and want to become as best as he can because he want to make a difference in Danish rugby. Absolutely. And great. And for any of those, those series of one on one, go back through our site, uh, Rugby Academy Ireland on Facebook, um, or through to the website, Rugby Academy Ireland Dr. IE. And we've got a series of one on ones that we've started doing over the last sort of six to eight weeks there with uh, former students um, and with coaches and with analysts. And we've got a couple there where we've got uh, two children, uh, one each, and, and we've got an interview with uh, a lad. And is uh, Sean and James uh, James O'Brien, his dad, who who was in Belgium, and um, and and and, and Thomas Wickman, Sarah Ironside, his mum, uh, also in Belgium, but Irish, but they're over there on the expat circuits as well. And uh, it's great to hear what the parents think, isn't it? Because a lot of parents contact you, and they're not sure, Dan, about maybe sending. Oh, look at it. At the end of the day, you know, it's the parents are the stakeholders, if you want to call it that way. You know, parents aren't sure because, like, and you know. Uh, being a parent myself, you know, you always think of the mainstream uh, path. And then if the mainstream path is not uh, followed or you're not good enough to be there, you think, okay, go and get another another job or maybe it's not for you. But rugby has become so global now that there's, there is a career if you want to take it, you know, uh, at different levels. You know, each country... You've got professional rugby, you've got amateur rugby, you've got semi-pro rugby, but you can honestly go and play all over the world. And people might not know that, you know, and that gives you life experience and so on. So that is also what we want to offer. Yes, we want to make the, the player a professional player, but the pathway in Ireland especially is so well run by the academies but we want to go to those players that miss out on a sub-academy uh, deal or, or so on and say, look, we're there. We're there to develop you as a, as a player. And then, you know, the future, who knows what the future might bring. Absolutely right. So on that, success of students and uh, the academy graduates. <clears throat> we've spoken about some of them, but we've had players uh, boys and girls. So let's look at a couple of the homegrown talents. Uh, first of all, let's go to this young lady here. Tell us about Abigail. <laughs> Abigail Conan, great. And again, you know, um, came to us as a transition year student. I'll never forget the first time we met her in Kilashi. Very nervous. Parents were very nervous. She's from Burr, is a local club. She wasn't sure about transition year uh, transition year in a school um somehow got got hold of us wasn't that into rugby and geez just the year that she was with us developed into a very competent rugby player but more than that you know she's a qualified personal trainer um, she coaches in a local in Tullamore rugby club. She actually looks after the under 16 girls. So I do think there's more to it than than just rugby. But she captained the Leinster under 18 sevens team um, in the last interprovincial tournament. So um, a great great story from a girl that probably wasn't sure and only started playing rugby when she was 12 and so on and that gives me a, a lot of satisfaction is to see 
how those people absolutely then love the game uh, when when they leave us. Yeah, absolutely. And, and go on and watch her one on one, uh, my one on one chat with Abigail, Abigail Conan. Uh, natural young leadership skills she's got there. And I say she, she, is, she is now coaching. She's got all these qualifications at the age she's at. Mm. Um, and she's thoroughly enjoying the leadership role of developing the, the next level of club and in her local school of, of, uh, of, of young female rugby players come through. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I think that's fab. Another one that you had, and there's been so many, but we had to sit, we had to sort of whittle down just a couple of boys and a couple of girls, a couple of home, a couple of so girls. Some are not going to be happy with you, Joe. But <laughs> Tell me about it. I'll, I'll phone them off. So, uh, look, she's uh, she's probably our poster girl at the at the moment. You know, Erin King, and again, you know, we never originally we never thought about a transition year program, and Erin's mom, Joanne, um, you know, contacted us and said you know, do you do a transition year program? We only see you doing a full-time program. And, and we said, no, we're not, but let's tailor towards what Erin wants. Erin uh, came into us as fourth year. She's right. Well, I don't know with all the success if if she's going to write a leaving cert uh, starting next Wednesday, but she's only still in sixth year. But the year that she had with us, um, you know, again, could just see the development. Uh, she's always had the talent and she just needed that, you know, where she could do what she loved every day. And now through the Irish system, that's a continuous path for her. So um, brilliant player, great girl, you know, with a with a very, very good future ahead of her. And, and that image of her is playing in the Irish women's seven side, traveling the globe on a professional contract and the HSBC circuit. Now, and that's how, quickly, that's how quickly it can happen, you know, especially probably in the girls' game where the training ages are are quite low. In the men's game, you know, that um, it's probably more difficult to have that rapid rise. Um, but we, in saying that, we've seen it as well, you know, a lot of late starters uh, to the game that excel very quickly. Or once they get into academy setup, their level just just rises, you know, uh, because there's so much information that they never knew that that they now get. Yeah, absolutely. And a couple of lads uh, now have returned to overseas. <laughs> One of my favourite characters, <laughs> Tony Camper. Uh, again, you know, South African Burki, um, you know, that uh, was schooled at one of the best schools in South Africa, great college. Um, I was lucky enough to play with his dad. So he comes from good pedigree as well. Uh, but Connie just, you know, he he came to us in January uh, on a short course, you know, that we'll speak about probably later, January to, uh, or to um, April, almost speaking Afrikaans there, uh, January to April. And then he loved it so much that he came back for September to April for full course. So Connie was with us for 18 months. Um, played for the Tel Aviv Heat in the European competition. And currently there's quite a few people interested in his services uh, for, for the coming year. So uh, watch this space to see where Connie will end up. But certainly, you know, as players go, I call him the, although he's not little, but I call him the little tyke furlong because skill-wise, skill uh, you know, he can do everything. Yeah, a good all-round footballer, isn't he? You know, I say the more modern-day prop, the type. And look, I I was lucky enough to coach Tyke as as a sixteen-year-old, you know, seventeen-year-old, and so, um, and if I compare the two at that same stage, and I know comparisons in sport is very difficult to make, but but Connie has definitely got the ability. If he has Tyke's drive, you know, you know, he can he can go places. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. And we all know about the rise of uh, Major League Rugby, MLR, in the States now and how fast that is growing. And we've had a, a number of uh, graduates um, across there. We've got you know, playing with the New England Free Jacks at the moment. I have to give them a shout out. <laughs> so uh, intrinsically linked to them. But also we have um, Oliver Fagan. Yeah, no, Oli, again, you know, a guy that's really in charge of his own pathway, something that we're very proud of Um producing as well. Uh, Ollie is from the States, went to South Africa to an academy in South Africa. 
Um, but there it's different in the sense of they all team based, you know, and he felt he needed more individual training. So contacted us, was part of our webinar show. And again, you know, that's very good of players uh, trying to do more themselves. Part of our webinar series during the uh, during COVID contacted us, came to the academy from September, uh, would have left in November, only came for three months and again stayed for six months till February when the MLR started, uh, where he got contracted uh, to the uh, Jackals. Um, but didn't stay in the Jackals for too long because he's now with North Otago in New Zealand. So, and for us, that's also a great credit that, you know, uh, New Zealand, um, one of Rugby Academy Islands players is, is over there at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. Super. <clears throat> and, excuse me. And, and there is a whole range of these youngsters, boys and girls, playing at different levels across the globe. And, uh, you know, and, and, no matter what level they're at, they've got all these qualifications that want to do the fourth edge. But it is, you know, just on that, and I know, you know, without trying to sell sell it too much, but the uh, we've had a guy this year, Alex Mateis, you know, he's a South African with a Portuguese uh, passport. So, again, he, he can go and play anywhere in Europe. But Alex got a scholarship with St. Mary's University, a four-year scholarship with St. Mary's University in the USA. And that's something we can provide for for players as well, you know. So the future is is what we're looking at, not just you dropped, see you later, you know, go back to your club or, or whatever. So uh, that personal touch and so on. But as I said to you, you know, we're talking about the success stories. Ethan Fryer is another one. He was the same year as Aaron King uh, with us, you know, and there's two players. Uh, Ethan is playing international rugby for Canada and then playing for the Free Jacks in the MLR, and he's he's not he's just turned 20. Yeah, absolutely. Super. Courses. <clears throat> we do get an awful lot of questions on the courses, the types of courses, so run us through things. So uh, one-day clinics, what are, what are they for then, the one-day clinics? Well, the one-day clinic is, is uh, again, you know, there's so, so many or variety of courses that we do. We do one-day clinics where... Um, a team can come into us for a for a whole day, uh, and that that is not age specific. We are at you know just in the recent past we had Westminster's under thirteens with us as sort of an end of season um, uh, day. Uh, we do a lot of preseason work, but so the day clinics is from ten to five again or ten to four, uh, where we do uh, team building with the guys. We do rugby specific training. Uh, there'll be a, a, a workshop around lifestyle or, or something to do with uh, the way to play the game. Um, we also have one-on-one -on -one courses, you know, where one-on-one uh, -on -one coaching, two-hour sessions uh, with players. Tomorrow I'm, I'm meeting two guys go doing kicking clinics, um, uh, forward unit-specific scrum, scrum clinics, uh, line-out clinics, backline-specific. So, so it's not just, uh, you know, as easy um, to probably articulate it, but, you know, a lot of, of one-day courses that, that we run um, in, in both backs, forwards, during the season and now uh, during the summer months. And talking about the summer months, we also run uh, different camps. So we run camps at Easter. Just recently, we just had some excellent coaches on yeah. them, and um, we've got summer camps coming up. We do some camps at Samhain, Halloween as well. Tell us about the summer camps. What, what do we do on the camps? Yeah, summer camp is basically, you know, and and again, there's a lot of camps out there. We give the players a taster of what life in the academy is about. So it's a week uh, living um, as part of our eight month uh, program where, again, guys will live with us. They'll uh, Now, we're non-residential as well, but they live with us, eat with us, uh, sleep with us, train with us, everything happening in the one, in the one place. Rugby-specific, position-specific, um, strength and conditioning, um, you know, in the gym, uh, teaching them about nutrition, uh, recovery, all the things that goes around athletic uh, development, rugby wise and then also 
uh, lifestyle skills that that we do with the players. So it's a small sort of co um, compact. Uh, what they get in the week is what they what they might get if they're there for for eight months. So it's a it's a taster program, but not taking away from uh, from the rugby part of it. I think it's fair to say everything that we do is a layered approach, isn't it? Really, just yeah, no, definitely. Because again, you know, and and our feedback will tell us. Player comes to us on on a week, really loves it, and then decides that he wants to do this for eight months of the year or four months of the year, and getting back. And that's why we get you know guys from all over the world, Uruguay, Chile, uh, all coming coming to join us. But. Um, because we're not a team as well, we really focus on individual skills, you know, on the core core factors of passing, tackling, rucking, evasion, um, all of that. And then game understanding through video analysis, excuse me, and so on, is a big part of us. Where, and um, in general terms, uh, some of the uh, competitors is, is out there, uh, you know, and it's all team-based team-based activities and, and so on. So we try and have a mixture of both. Cool. Nancy White, Nancy, good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. What day to the summer camps? You'd almost think we pre-positioned that. <laughs> we didn't. Um, <clears throat> Nancy, if you uh, if you uh, send us a, uh, a PM um, on, to, uh, on Facebook or info at uh, rugbyacademyisland.ie, then one of the team will get back to you. And we'll yeah, we run it through July and August, but that's the best advice, Joe, is um, if they contact us personally. Absolutely. Ty, for, for because we take people from across the globe, I always put it because my simple head is Tyiy transition year international year <laughs> full time part time because it's an easy way for me to explain it to people across the globe when we're chatting with people and engaging with them yeah. all the time. Explain what, what the transition year, the, the international Look, year, transition the whole, the whole course. Yeah, but the transition one, especially for here. Yeah, transition year, as you, and we're probably unique in Ireland. Some people in Northern Ireland don't even know about transition year, but it's it's going into basically your fourth year of, of um, senior school. Uh, and then, you know, guys, uh, through that year, it's, it's although it's an academic year, um, people go away, you know, uh, for work experience, for life experience. They might go away for a month skiing somewhere. They go to work experience to a lawyer's firm or an accountancy firm or to a, a sports um, academy or whatever to learn uh, what they want to become. And then they go into their, into their senior leaving cert cycle in Ireland in, in fifth and sixth year. So what we offer during that transition year, again, part full time where they come to us on the 1st of September and they leave uh, the 30th of May. Um, and we run a, a program for them where they, with us Monday to Friday, um, and then they go and play for their local clubs on the weekend and back Monday morning to uh, do our program. Through that, they get obviously the qualifications, they get all the, um, all the uh, coaching and, and so on, tutoring as, as we discussed. With the um, full-time transition year program, we then also run a part-time transition year program where people can come in for a player has got two weeks work experience. What is he going to do? Okay, I want to know what the, what life of a professional rugby player takes. So they can come to us for a two-week period uh, as part of their as part of their work experience, where um, where they come and come and uh, live the life of a of a player. And then we also have on Fridays, uh, and it's probably more localized, but on Fridays we've got a a day ty program where players come into us for the day from nine to five every Friday for 33 weeks uh, during the year, where again, that day, as we said, the summer camps are a, uh, probably a week in the life of the eight months. That day is everything congestured into, into that day. There you go. That is transition year explained for the people both in Ireland who don't know about it, in Northern Ireland who definitely don't know about it, and for those people abroad as well. So it is full time. It can be part time. It can be down to literally a couple of weeks. 
um, as well. But yeah, know, and again, like I said about the Kilani, we've had two two I'm people sorry. from Kilani with us, two students from Kilani, and the one the one guy's mate said, "Geez, no, that looks fun, you know, and you know, you're becoming a better player and so on." So can I go up there for a month? And he came for the month of January, you know, uh, came to us and so on. So we tailor made the program for for whatever uh, the player and, and the parent, uh, which is the stakeholder, as we call it, uh, wants. Absolutely. And for more information on all of the courses, but especially the TY course that we're sort of taking on now and the summer courses, uh, send us an email to info at rugbyacademyisland.ie or go to www.rugbyacademyisland.ie. Send us a message on Facebook, message on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, YouTube, <laughs> we're, we're, on all, we're, going, we're going across to all of those this evening as well, so you're welcome. <laughs> For those of people just joining us, go back to the very beginning to hear the very best from our director of rugby, Dan from Sale, and uh, you're welcome to, uh, to tonight's show. Dan, future plans to finish off with. There's a whole pile of things that we've got sort of racked up, ready to go. There's a, sh a new short four-month course, Home and Abroad. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, and again, all these things, um, you know, come to fruition because of... Uh, circumstances and certain parts of the world you know the southern hemisphere calendar is different to the northern hemisphere calendar but and then for some people um it might be a financial thing or whatever the case might be but our short course runs from uh january to to april uh during the year it's a four-month course where basically um players still get a qualification they just don't get a personal trainer nqf level five but they have the opportunity to get nqf four some of the coaching courses they won't get and so on um but most of the program will be the same definitely around the coaching uh, aspect and then the playing experience with within island for for the local clubs as well but the short course is just a four month uh, period um, where the, the full-time course is is obviously an eight-month period. Cool. What else have we got? Future plans, courses, overseas coaching. Some really exciting things happening there. Can we tell anybody? Yeah. Uh, sorry if I jump jumped the gun there, but that is that is why, you know, I don't know if we know where the, the boundaries are of the academy. You know, the, the contacts that we make through throughout the world is just amazing, you know, and opportunities that it creates for coaches, for players, um, for everybody. Um, so uh, Canada, uh, you know, I'm going over to Canada in, in July on a, on a um, rugby uh, network um, coaching uh, that I'm going to do over there. Um, we've had coaching courses in, in Belgium, you know, weekend courses where we go in, we coach uh, or do some coach education, uh, coach a team to show the practical to the coaches as well, and then have uh, after aftercare with the coaches that uh, they, you know, in communication to us. We've had coaches over from Chile. We've had coaches over from, from Belgium, from South Africa that with us for four days or five days, you know, the way we try and give them as much experience of the Irish uh, coaching network as possible. And then we also had a Erasmus student for for four months that, uh, you know, part of his degree, he's got to go on a Erasmus. And um, a brilliant fellow, David Vellante from, from Italy, and was a massive help to us, but also learned a lot about how to run uh, a day-to-day -day academy uh, with us and everything that in in takes, not just the nice stuff on the field, but the being uh, going to get food, <laughs> or you know the shopping, uh, pushing a shopping trolley and and so on. So so there's a lot more behind the scenes that that goes on. But um, so future plans, you know, I was lucky enough to go to Portugal to coach on an international tennis tournament where four of the players went went with. Um, so it just broadened uh, horizons the whole time. You know, we've got Manon as part of the seventh circuit as well for, for Belgium. We've been invited there to, to coach um, and and just to build the, the ongoing network uh, through rugby. 
Absolutely. <clears throat> and you talk just to explain to people who aren't quite aware what the Erasmus Plus project is. It is a 27 billion uh, euro seven year program, which means that students from across Europe who qualify can go to other countries and they can be attached for internships for a set period of time. We had Davide Valenti from Italy, you see, and he was on the sports management side of doing his master's. There is also a sports science side. So if you want to, if you are studying a master's, for example, or any educational qualification in coaching or analysis or physiotherapy or psychology, sports psychology, anything like that. So if you are one of the, our many viewers uh, who, who follows our Academy Acolytes followers, as I like to call them, and have a look at Erasmus Plus or contact us if you're from a European country and you're interested in doing an internship, either physically on the sports science or the sports management side uh, with Rugby Academy Island, and we'll be able to put you in touch with the people in your country and come and work with us for a second because it is a phenomenal project and it's free. In fact, you get a set amount of money for coming. And um, it is, uh, again, uh, there's a one on one on our Facebook page. Um, and on our Instagram studies and, and Twitter with Davide Valente from Italy, who was our intern as well. So that is what Erasmus Project, Erasmus Plus Project is. Um, we have uh, we've got a whole range of other things coming in. We get, and we make no apologies now for sort of pitching this be, because we get an awful lot of, an awful, um, I am the so-called head of engagement. People now are beginning to take notice more and more and more because they want to be involved in with a rising ship carries or, or a rising tide carries all ships. Here we go. <clears throat> joint ventures, joint ventures and sponsorships or joint venture partnerships. Uh, yes, we are open to them. We are actually engaging with a number of individuals. If you're filthy stinking rich and you are own your own company and you want to put something back into the next generation of rugby and you want to sponsor the academy, you want to sponsor Dan or Johan or even a good looking head of engagement type chap, you want to sponsor a child coming through a course. I can hear the whole world giggling at that one. Um, if you want to sponsor um, a, a one day clinic, if you want to sponsor a, a course, a transition year, you know, anything, uh, then please get in touch with us and as you'll see, view up there anybody who's been watching us for a while know that we look after our joint venture partners um, and we are actively engaged at the moment with a number of organizations um uh, who are who place players and offer them opportunities across the group dan your thoughts on behalf of yourself and johan on that ah uh, look we 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 people people uh, people's people you know and for us the partnerships is even more so than than the sponsorships, you know, sponsorship is obviously will help a lot. Um, but, you know, the partnerships, the joint ventures, as you say, uh, we certainly want to want to give as, um, you know, a lot more than than what we what we want to take, if I can, if I can put it that way. Um, so for us, any anybody out there, whether it's rugby related, business related, uh, doesn't matter, as I say, you know, food, uh, we we cater for the for the players so anything that you can think of um partnership wise um you know we we open open for for that absolutely brilliant <clears throat> and very finally upcoming courses there's a whole pile of things happening between now and the, the next six months of the year so you've got open days in june tell us about them yes again just to contact us uh through uh, the social media channels or or at info at, at rugby academy island.ie um, where anytime suited to guys we know now that especially transition years leaving cert you know going into exam period but through the month of june um, we open for an open day to come and see the place you know to come and see what what you're thinking of and so on and and you'll be amazed uh, because as facilities go, uh, you'll go hard to find the facilities that we have at, at Kilashi uh, House Hotel in, in County Kildare in Nace. So um, the open days are set for that. We take you for a tour. Any questions that you have, um, uh, we'll, we'll answer. And then, you know, even if you want to incorporate that with a one-on-one -on -one session or whatever, we, we open to that as well. So June is all about trying to build those connections, trying to show people around because as soon as July starts with, with summer camps and so on, time, time gets busy 
and then we we can't spend that that one on one time. Although we'll find time, but um, you know it's much easier now coming in June. So the whole of June, there are free open days. Come and have a look around. Team will walk you uh, walk you through everything. Just contact us at info at uh, rugbyacademyallen.ie or through any of our social channels. You know, I spend half my life engaging with people, and, and it's and it's great. And and no question is ever a bone question. It's just you know, it all starts with the conversations. Have the conversation with us. We then run into the July. Again, uh, contact us for the dates. I think Nancy's going to do reference the uh, summer courses as well. And then we're into, and then like I say, you're, you're, you're away in Canada coaching as well on a mini holiday. Did offer to carry your bags for you, but no, I'm not good enough. <laughs> so there we go. No, but that actually came on the back of Sean Snayman, you know, and that shows you how it works. Sean Snayman was with us this year, played for Kildara Rugby Club, uh, then got offered uh, the National Academy uh, place in, in Canada. And his dad just, he was so happy with what Johan and, and myself produced and the academy and so on that he invited us on a, on a trip to Canada and to come and spread the word over there um, while, while coaching in the province of Ontario uh, during, during July. So really looking forward to that. Uh, but that's just a testament of, of one, one parent to, towards us, you know. Superb. And um, we've had a whole pile of questions through in the last couple of weeks since we started advertising for the transition year. Is it too late for people to apply for the transition year now? Or to find no, out? not not at all. Again, our applications, obviously, the because of um, accommodation constraints, uh, you know, the so, the sooner the better, uh, just to to know that your your place is secured. Uh, but honestly, um, you know, June, it's it's junior cert, it's leaving cert. So probably the month of July, uh, you know, after a week or two's holidays, people will, you know, only know what they really want for, for their children in transition year. But just in the meantime, if you want to know uh, about it and so on, we, we open. So um, there's no actual closing date bar, you know, in August. Uh, or the first first week in August, um, but the only problem that can be is Kilashi offers a certain amount of accommodation, and uh, you know we might not be able to to fulfil that criteria then. Here, listen, Johan isn't uh, isn't listening, so I won't get in trouble. But here's a question: <laughs> Technically, because the Learner Pathway Program is about taking the individuals and all of those qualifications which actually can be in any sport. Is it possible if somebody wants it from another sport, like GAA or um, uh, or basketball or, or anything, wanted to come and avail of the TY course and you could do some specific separate training? For, is that possible, technically? It is possible. It is possible. It, it will take a bit of juggling. But as you say, the only two aspects of our program that is real rugby orientated is the rugby coaching and training on the pitch and then the workshops and video analysis and and so on that we do but in saying in saying that we have filtered with the idea of you know at ty level could it be a more a general uh, approach to players but that's something maybe for the future but again if there's a six foot six basketball player um we'll make him a rugby player with within the within the year and we will create that love uh for the game for him without taking away anything off of the basketball and that's actually where we get basketball coaches in we get uh gaelic coaches in uh to come and give the players that experience as well of of other sports because at the end of the day rugby is a spatial awareness uh and evasion game Absolutely. A uh, good question <coughs> from Johnny Whopper here. Johnny, great to uh, always great to see you on, mate. Um, have there been any graduates who have progressed into the Irish talent pathway? I think the simpler stands without probably Erin Kings in, in recent times. Yes, it's probably as I said. You know, in the in the men's game, um, not not yet. You know, but the Irish academies are so well uh, looked after and really top quality players that's there and and coaches. Um, but Aaron King uh, playing uh, for for Ireland. Uh, there was five uh, Irish under eighteen girls 
uh, that came through the academy that represented Ireland under 18 this year. Um, we had a couple of uh, guys that played uh, Leinster Youths uh, this year that came through through the path. Mm -hmm. And then some of the transition year students went into, uh, again, coming from non-rugby playing schools, came to us and then went into their final cycle into rugby playing schools because of uh, mm -hmm. they want that again, uh, you know, what, what we provided in TY. It's something that we really hope uh, we can. Um, but at the moment, I think um, the Irish system is well looked after um, and we create those opportunities for players. But that's needless to say that players can come back. Although he wasn't part of the academy, a guy like Carl Martin is probably a good example yeah. that's playing for uh, for Montpellier, um, you know, that, that was uh, uh, or I coached him at a, at a younger age. And then uh, another guy... Um, uh, Sebastian Berti, you know, that was in Newbridge College and so on. Um, he, he did a couple of weeks with us uh, during transition year and, you know, he's progressed to, to greater things. So um, to answer the question, not in the Irish setup in the, in the men's game, although at, at youth level, yes, uh, but certainly in the women's game, uh, we have. Cool. Johnny Hope answers a question for you. For all further information, any question you want, contact us via any of our social uh, uh, platforms or social channels. One on all of them. Come follow us and like us and follow us and keep up to date with what we're doing. We're just been going to be setting up very shortly a new uh, email management system where we will be sending out monthly updates on everything that is going on. And um, yeah, please engage with us. That's that's why we're here. But info at academyisland.ie or go to our main site, rugbyacademyisland.ie. Okay, that's it for tonight. Uh, let's just. Um, We've had the, let me just take that one off next, sorry. Um, we had uh, the great Dan Fonsale, Director of Rugby uh, here at Rugby Academy Island on. And uh, we have rattled through a whole pile of stuff. What's been happening with the Academy? The roles of, uh, of Dan as Director of Rugby and Johan Taylor as Managing Director. Overview of the courses from the one-day clinics, the summer, the Eastern, the Halloween courses, transition year, international year, full-time, part-time, residential, non-residential. <laughs> Is just so much happening. And the successes of the students and the graduates just keeps talking, talking, talking tonight. You know, sometimes we don't even realize what we're doing, you know, because uh, where once you put it like that, or once you put it on paper, there's there's we cater for everybody, you know, Absolutely. and that's that's what we want to want to get across. Absolutely. Uh, we've talked about the learning pathway programs where. And uh, students, aspiring students, can come in and not only aspire to be the best player they can be at the third level, a whole range of qualifications. Talk to us about the Learner Pathway Program. I firmly, firmly, firmly believe that it is the way to go for the youngsters to learn something. And we've got 17, 18, 19 year olds now who are qualified as personal fitness trainers, analysts, strength and conditioning advice. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy. We'll be back on. Uh, like and follow us on all our channels and find out more information about when we're back on. For a man who hasn't been on for a couple of years and was more, <laughs> more nervous than a nervous thing, he's rattled through just onto the hour now. So I think he uh, deserves a round of applause. Well done, buddy. Uh, oh, look, thanks thanks a lot, man. But a real shout out to to all the players that's been with, that's been through us, you know, from... Spencer Lochman, who was the very first guy that signed up with us, whose brother Jeremy plays for Munster. Spencer is having a good career over in the States at the moment. To every last guy that was, and girl that was at our Easter camp, hopefully we see all those faces again. And really, uh, we feel very pr proud of, of what we've achieved so far. And more importantly, what the player uh as as achieved because it's all about the player and uh if we can help them on a certain journey we're willing to do so cool dan from sale director ruby ruby academy island thanks very much we look forward to seeing you all again uh go on to our page and our channels and watch our series of one-on-ones and if there's anything you'd like to know about or hear about or there's something you'd like the academy to look at or share with you on our lives or on our post then let us know and we'll consider it um, I'm Joe Shepard, Head of Engagement here. This has been Dan from Sale, and this has been Rugby Academy Ireland Live. Dan, thanks very much, mate. Thanks as always, Joe.